my friend Shing created a beautiful game called Amending. It's a solo keepsake game about a journey to visit a dear and distant friend. Thank you Shing for sponsoring this video. In this tutorial, I'm going to cover some basic hand sewing techniques and a little bit of embroidery, a little bit of beading, just some basic knowledge to get you started. Dig through your craft stash and collect up some basic items. You'll want an embroidery hoop, some beads, some buttons, and some embroidery floss and thread. You will need an embroidery needle and hand sewing needle and possibly a beading needle depending on the size of your bead holes. If you'd like to purchase this game, please follow the link below to Shing's website. I will also be posting a more advanced tutorial if you know the basics and you want some exciting, fun ideas. Let's talk about the type of needles you will need. <laughs> needles you need. Um, you will definitely need an embroidery needle. A hand sewing needle will be nice and a beading needle, again, might be nice as well. What are the differences, you ask? And that is a very astute question because they all just look like sharp little pointy metal things. An embroidery needle has a long eye, but it's still sharp. So we can fit all of our embroidery thread through here. Right, so there is an embroidery needle. A regular hand sewing needle has a smaller eye and it's still sharp and pointy. I um, like long hand sewing needles, so this one's super long. This is a beading needle. You see how it has a very teeny tiny hole and it's long and it's also very sharp. So this is a beading needle. It's thin, so it can pass through a tiny bead. To make sure you have the right size needle, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pass your needle through your bead and make sure it goes very smooth, right? So that's the beading needle, went through no problem. And when I do my regular hand sewing needle, it gets stuck. I do need to have a beading needle handy for my beads. Test it out for yourself. See if you need a beading needle. Just as a heads up, I will be talking a little itty bitty bit about gameplay. So if you want zero spoilers, stop now. What I'm going to do now is pick a button that represents my home and my friend's home. Well, that's a lot of buttons. Whoops. <laughs> I like this, this purpley button. And let's pick something with a shank on it from my friend's house. This is a lovely shank button. Here, I'll show you how to sew on this button. So I've picked a two hole button and a, and a shank button. She got the shank because it has a little bit of a boop at the back. These buttons are not going to be load bearing. They're not going to hold anything shut. They are just decorative. So we can use embroidery floss, even though embroidery floss is not super duper strong. Now that I have my buttons picked out, I'm going to thread up my embroidery floss. If you've never embroidered before, I'll walk you through the steps. This is my embroidery floss. I'm going to use a dark color so you can see it better on camera. This will potentially show through the light colored fabric, but I think it'll add an interesting texture and dimension. If I used a light colored embroidery floss, it would have less likelihood of showing through. I've got my embroidery floss out. Now I have to find the ends always tricky. Here it is. I've got the end of my embroidery floss. I'm just going to wheel off an arm length. You don't really need more than that. My embroidery floss is cut straight across. I might have issues getting that through my needle. Let's double check and see. What I like to do is I like to squish it flat and then hold it with my thumbnail. I'm going to encourage it to hold together. I've got my thread. I'm holding it with my thumb, putting my needle on. It's not doing it. Okay, one more time. <laughs> one didn't go in. Wants to fight me. Ho oh, ho, it did it. 18th time's the charm. Make sure all your threads are in and then you can draw your embroidery of floss through the eye of the needle. Tie a knot next. Now, the way I tie my knots, super duper simple. What you're going to do is hold your thread in your non-dominant hand and wrap it around to make a loop, right? I'll do it again to make it look like it wasn't magic. I'm just gonna push it back on itself to make a loop. I'm gonna hold that. Now that I have this loop, what I'm going to do is push these ends through and then pull them through. Just make a little loop-de-loop. -loop. If you have it available to you, 
hold everything and pull. Now you have a nice little knot at the end and you will pull your work through. That knot is for any hand sewing. You sew with thread, you sew with embroidery floss, you can use that knot. I'm picking where I want my house. I'm gonna have a beach house. So I'm gathering all of the fabric up in my hands and I'm going to put my house uh, between the foothills and the beach. I've got my needle. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up from the back of the fabric. What you can do too is you can just stab the needle up and then put your button on it. Easy. There you go. And pull. Flipping over once in a while just to make sure we don't have any weird whoop-de-whoops and loopy-doop-doops. We want to make it look nice on the back too. Okay. And I'm just going to go back in. If you have a four-hole needle, you could do an X. You don't actually need to sew your button down uh, the normal way. I could totally make my next stitch come out this way. In fact, that actually looks really good. I'd like to have a little decorative button on here. So I'm going to sew it to the outside. Go back in. Kind of holding everything together just so I can see where my stitches need to go. Just to make my life easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my thumb on my thread going into the fabric. And that makes sure, see how that kind of loops up and knots and gets kind of funky? Now that stitch is in and I can move on to the next stitch. This is going to take some doing. You're going to poke up, oh, that's not even close. I need to be closer. Oh, okay, yeah, that's better. My needle's coming up and through the hole. I'm going to pull my threads. Again, making sure on the back that nothing's looping or swooping. I'm just going to kind of hold everything down. You don't want to pull too tight because then it'll look funky, it'll get all wrinkly, but a nice tension to stick it down. Now we can go through this one. My button is sewn on. I could potentially sew more, but it's basically it. You can do it traditional where you go between the two holes or you could do it more decorative like I did. It's up to you to tie off this button. What we're going to do is we're going to turn it to the back side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small stitch into nothing here. Right, I've got a little bit of fabric on my needle. Take my thread and I'm going to wrap it around the needle two times. Pull it taut and I'm going to put my thumb on it. I'm going to pull my needle through all this. As gentle as you can. Okay, here we go. There's my first knot tied for my button. We can trim our threads, not too close. You wanna give a little bit of it end here. Oh, that's a lot of an end. You wanna make sure the threads don't pull back in and untie, basically. Now I'm gonna sew on the shank button. For the shank button, it's going to be the same. You want about an arm length of thread. I'm using regular thread for this, so you can see the difference between using regular thread and embroidery floss. Here is my needle. It's a little smaller of a hole. Same rules apply though. What we're gonna do, Encourage the threads to go one way. Thread that needle. There. I'm going to double my thread. So I'm going to pull both threads and make sure they're even at the bottom here. And once they're even, I'm going to treat them the same. I'm going to make a loop, pass the tails through the loop, pull that knot tight. There's my knot. Now my thread is ready to go. Grab my shank button and I'm gonna put my friend's house near the stream in the mountains. Same rule applies for this. Put your needle up through and make sure it's the right area. I'm gonna drop my button onto that. Make sure it looks good on the back. Totally does, no loops, no bloops. Put my needle in close to where I came out of the fabric. I'm gonna go back in. Check it over here. I'm gonna go into the fabric close to my knot and pull it through the fabric. And then I'm gonna go through the eye of the button one more time. And now I'm going to drop it into the fabric close to, uh, close to the edge of the button. And near my last stitch, come to the back. I'm going to tie this off. I'm taking a small stitch, just a few threads putting the needle through. Before I get all the way out, I'm going to grab my thread. I'm gonna wrap it around the needle two times. 
if you really want this to stay secure and not fall out ever, you can totally stab the knot through the heart. Ha ha ha. And just do it again. Wrap it twice and pull through. And then cut your threads. And now we can do embroidery stitches. In order to do embroidery stitches, you will need an embroidery hoop, which I've got here, and it is very well loved. What you're going to do, um, depending on the kind you have, this is the most common kind I've seen. It's bamboo. It's got a little twisty twist here. It comes with two circles. I'm gonna pop one circle out. I like to put this circle with that holds it taut at the back. So I am going to sort of see where it needs to go. Now, I know that my button needs to be at the edge and I'm going to be stitching over here. So let's put my button at the kind of the bottom edge. Now I'm going to take the tightening hoop and plop it over the top of this. Hop, 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 hop. Plop. Now you see I've got this nice taut surface, but we can get it more taut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this down without dislodging it from the hoop. I'm going to gently pull the fabric so it's tight like a drum. You can see it gets nice and tight in there. Now, before I get too wild, I'm gonna tighten this down even more. Embroidery floss all knotted off and ready to go. Now I'm ready to take my first few stitches. I am going to come up from the back. So I'm gonna flip all this over. I'm just gonna pick a spot close to my button. You can kind of see through the fabric, which is nice. Come up and through. It's up to you how big you like to make your stitches. Keeping in mind that when you go through these lines, you pull another card. So I'm gonna put the needle going down straight down and through, come to the back and pull it through. Oh, it's satisfying. You can totally draw your path out first or you can mark your stitches however you'd like to. Um, but I like the idea that it's looks handmade and it's sort of uneven. I'm just using the ridges on my thumb to make my stitches. So it's gonna be sort of uneven. And pull that nice and taut. Now you can sort of see how the dark thread shows through. I think that's an interesting effect. If that's something that's not interesting to you, then you can totally use a light color thread or a different color thread. I'm just meandering along my path. What we're doing is called even running stitch. Sometimes the game asks you to put a button down where something interesting happens. So you can either do that with a embroidery floss again, or you can do it with a regular needle. I like the idea of having multiple needles ready to go for different things. So I'm going to just stitch this on with thread because I have this needle with thread all lined up and ready to go. I'm going to start at the back and sew this button on. and tie it off in the normal way. But what if you wanted to sew a bead instead of a button? It's very similar to sewing a button. What you're going to do is you're gonna put your bead down where you about want it, put your needle up through the back of the work, pull your thread through. I've tied a knot just like the normal hand sewing knot. Put this bead on my beading needle. I've already come up and through the fabric. Yeah, so I don't need to worry about it too much. Can I just sew it to itself? No. Okay. Oh! <laughs> my knot was not big enough. Get your knot really large when you're sewing on beads. Your knot on your beading needle has to be pretty big. So instead of passing through the tail once, I'm going to have you pass through the tail twice to get your knot really large. I figured out where I want my bead to go. So I'm going to put my needle up close to that bead from the back of the fabric. Put my bead on my needle. Pull it through. So now you recognize this. I'm going to just put my needle back into the fabric close to the opening of the bead. 
I would sew your beads down two to three times just to anchor them really well. Out of the fabric close to the bead hole, put it through the bead. Anchor it, make sure it's taut, and put it back through. Tie off the thread just like you did with a button, just like everything else. I'm coming up to the end of my embroidery floss. I've got about four inches left. I've taken a small bite. I'm going to wrap my thread around the needle twice. I am gonna do this two times just so my knot stays really strong for my stitches. Stab it through the heart and do it again. So I'm gonna wrap it twice. So this is why you wanna have a lot when you end so you don't have to struggle. <laughs> And there you go. And then you can continue on with your next stitch in the very next place you need to stitch. If you want some more advanced beading, we will do that in the next video, the more advanced sewing techniques.